Hello and welcome, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper and today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Robots in Disguise Skybite and I love this toy. But before we get into the review, if you haven't done so already, please take a moment to consider subscribing to the channel. It won't cost you anything, but it will help me and the channel out. If you'd like to further help out the channel, please share with your friends if you like what you see. Share this video on social media, have your friends come over, check out the channel and subscribe as well. Now that we're losing our community options and our notifications, the best way on keeping up with what's going on on the channel is to come back and check it out often. I usually upload one to two videos a week, sometimes more. Additionally, if you'd like to help out some more, I have placed a donate button up at the top banner. If you want to click on that, I surely do appreciate it. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and now let's get on to the review. Who's the baddest shark around? Who's the smartest shark in town? Skybite, that's who. Hello and welcome. I'm Bert the Stormtrooper. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Robots in Disguise Skybite. And I love this toy. Originally released in July of 2001, he is a mega class figure and originally retailed for approximately $15. And that blows my mind. I remember when these guys were coming out. And... For those of you that are not familiar, the Mega Class is in the approximation of our current Voyager line that we that we have right now. In fact, uh, they, I'd probably say they're a little bigger than the current Voyager lines, and uh, it's just uh, mind blowing to look at a Mega Class figure that's that big that went for half of what the Voyagers are going for now. And uh, so I absolutely love this figure. This is one that I never got originally. And I've been wanting to get one for a while. And I found this one. This is another one of the figures that I recently picked up at my local collector's club meetup. And I was really excited to find him complete. Really good price on this guy. And R.I.D., I really have a lot of love for R.I.D. For the 2001 Robots in the Sky series, or Car Robots, as it was called in Japan. Because that was, one, it was the series that brought me back into Transformers. I, was, I had lost interest in Transformers. Uh, in the 90s, after Generation 2, I never really got into Beast Wars or Beast Machines or any of that stuff until later on. And so when I saw that the Transformers were going to start being vehicles again and Optimus Prime was a fire engine, that brought me back in. And Robots in Disguise was a very interesting line because it had an amalgamation of every Transformer series that had existed up until that point. They had their own original designs and figures for that line, but they also had figures from Generation 1 because there was a Bruticus in there. They had uh, figures from Generation 2 because some of those, uh, I, I don't remember the names of them, but the small cars with the spring transformations, those all came out of Generation 2. They had figures from Beast Wars, uh, Transmetals, uh, Transmetals 2, which is where this figure comes from. They had figures from the Japanese Beast Wars second. So it was really cool series that mixed everything that had existed up until that point. So Skybite here is a retool. It's not even really a retool. It's a, a, a redeco or a repaint of the Transmetals 2 Cybershark, which was a Maximal. And it's funny that he was repurposed for a Predacon. But he is a cyber organic or a techno organic um, hammerhead. Not a hammerhead, sorry. His original form was hammerhead, but... Uh, well, rather, Cyber Shark's original form was a hammerhead. Uh, Skybite here is a great white shark. He is absolutely awesome. He looks so fantastic. Here in shark mode, he is approximately nine inches long. Uh, doesn't really do a whole lot other than just kind of be there and uh, be a shark. Uh, <laughs> that's really kind of about it. He does have a, a quote-unquote flight mode, uh, which we'll get into Um but just kind of going underneath, so you can see there is some robot cable showing up down there. Uh, but other than that, that's that's really it. These fins here can move. Uh, the back can move if you unlock it. I'm not going to unlock it just yet. And there is a feature that we can do, an attack feature we can do with the head. That I'm going to show you here in a moment. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's really all kind of all you get uh, for uh, Skybite here <laughs> in his um, beast mode. And a quick for, for quick comparison, here he is with the Generations Skybite that I reviewed a while back. And uh, yeah, kind of far cry. Like this was my first really real Skybite figure because uh, I never got this one. So I was really excited about this one. But now that I have the original one, th yeah, there's there's no, no one like the original. This one is fantastic. Just check out this figure. There really isn't much of a comparison. So, I mean, still, okay figure, I guess, but... This is the one. <laughs> Absolutely love this guy. Okay, so we have 
a an attack feature. So if you look right into the mouth there, there is his launcher, his uh, missile launcher. It's also going to be his gun in robot mode. So what we do here is we're going to open the mouth up. Now, one of my missiles just shoots out if you look at it the wrong way. So if that happens, then, you know, just you're ready for it. But the idea here is that you're going to open up the mouth all the way up, and that's going to reveal the gun with the two missiles. And now we're going to move the bottom of the jaw, and that's going to move the missile launcher just enough to hit those triggers. And, yeah, there's one. And if you play with the with the jaw enough, there's the other. So that's that's the whole idea, uh, is to get those to launch. And really, uh, you could store them in there. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend it uh, because once the missiles are in there, they are going to be hitting the back of these feet right here. So a lot of times, I'll see that people will store those missiles in there long term, and then when they go to get them out, uh, they'll be warped. Uh, they'll, they'll have a little bit of a bend on them. So if you want to keep them straight, just kind of store them separately. Don't keep them in there for long term. Like what I'm doing now is fine because I'm just putting them in there and shooting them back out again. But I wouldn't put them in there for long term. Uh, you just saw probably my one and only gripe uh, about this figure in this mode. And that's these panels right here. They don't really tab into anything. They're just there with friction, as you saw. And if you move them a lot, they'll fall off. So, yeah, I kind of wish that these had a way to peg in. So that once you have them in shark mode, they'll just stay there. If you play with them, they're going to kind of move. As, as you see, they're just kind of moving around. And then for the flight mode or the attack mode, the idea is that you move these up and turn them. And it's going to be something like this, I think, on both sides. It's, it's really weird, and it's kind of nonsensical. So you turn those like that, pop this guy back in. This guy was not popping off. This guy has not given me any trouble all week, and now today, because I'm trying to do the review, he's going to start popping off on me, of course. So, all right, so there's that. So it's kind of like you're doing some kind of like a wing thing here with these guys, something like that. And then over on the back of the tail, you're going to open these up like that. And there is a little button. If you look down here, you can see the robot's hand. If you pull that down, there's a little button right there. And you push that up, and that's going to release the tail, and then you can pop this guy back in. There's enough of a button left that you can still tab the fist into place. And that's his uh, a flight mode or attack mode right there. And you can see there's a little wheel right back here. So if you turn on that, that's going to spin the back tail there. Let's see if I can get a good shot of that. That's the idea. So there you go. So that, that, that'll spin when you spin that thing. And, uh, yeah, so that's kind of like his flight mode or attack mode. So, eh, it's kind of an in-between thing, I think. So, let's get into transformation. Um, we can leave the claw open, and we can leave these out. We actually need to pull those out, so let's just as well take the shark head, push it up, take the, uh, uh, the cannon here, and just pop it out. You can see the two little pegs right there, and that was just popped in right in there. So we can just set this aside for the time being. Pull the legs down. And then you're going to pull this whole waist assembly down, as you saw just now, and just kind of straighten out the legs. Pull these apart, straighten out the feet. And uh, that is pretty much the whole bottom half of that robot done. And we're going to move this up because we are going to get quite tall. Uh, take the shark and separate it right here, just like so. And then these panels here, uh, we need to just move them out of the way for the time being. So... I usually will turn them down like that. There is some a lot of panel moving and turning that we're going to need to do. So we need things to be out of the way. Up here, these two uh, shells here, we're going to separate these. And then they are on hinges there and there. So we're going to bring these up. And this is why we needed these out of the way, because we need to turn these and rotate them so that they're facing out like that. This other one here tends to be a little trickier because it is a little bigger. But you'll get the idea here. Turn that, and it will get fiddly, and at times it can possibly even pop off. So don't worry if it does pop off, you can just pop it right back in place. Okay, so there's that. I think we still need to move higher up, don't we? All right, so now this whole thing is going to come up like so, and we're going to work on this piece right here. Come underneath, unpeg this arm, bring it out to the side, bring this arm out to the side. And now we're going to bring this whole chest piece down on that hinge. We're going to extend this down, and this waist piece needs to clip in. You see these two hooks right there is we're going to clip them in. So just bring this whole thing down. Make sure the arms are out of the way. Straighten out those hinges. I'm caught on something. I think I'm being caught on 
these panels right here. There we go. That's going to allow me to bring this down. And like I said, it's going to be fiddly. And then that's going to snap into place right there, just like that. Now, uh, we're pretty much there. All we got to do is just kind of straighten things out. Straighten out the arms. And then on these panels here, what I like to do is actually rotate them the other way around. So that these side fins are up as high as they'll go. And turn them up so that the white is turning up. Bring that down. And that's, you know, this these panels up here, these are going to be kind of a personal preference kind of thing. Uh, but I'm going just by the way he looked in the show, these panels, sometimes, like, if you look at the original Cybershark figure that this is based on, the panels would normally be folded up here around the back, but in the cartoon, he actually had these panels over his shoulders and off to the side like that, and they had some, some white detailing, so you can do that right there, and, uh, all we're doing here is straightening him out, everything looking nice just the way you like it, and there you go, there is Skybite in robot mode. Here in Robot Mode, Skybite stands approximately seven and a half inches tall, and he looks fantastic. He looks exactly like he did on the show. Of course, the show model was modeled after the toy itself, so it does make sense, but he's pretty cool. He's a little outdated for today's standards, but he's still a very, very cool figure. Real quick, for comparison, here he is once again with the generation, his Generation's counterpart, Generation Skybite, right there. So you can see kind of how he progressed from R.I.D. into Generations. And again, the Generations figure is a good figure, but I'm a little biased because I just love the R.I.D. one so much, and I've wanted one for such a long time. So, yeah, there you go. So you can see what these guys look like together. Now, for articulation, Skybike can turn his head. And then we've got some Beast Wars articulation going on here. So it's going to be really good. We've got the ball joint here at the shoulder. Uh, we have a rotation for this arm right here at the elbow. We do have a bend at the elbow. Uh, not a real hand, but we do have that spinner there so we can turn this uh, all over the place. Now on the other arm, uh, again, ball joint at the shoulder, ball joint at the elbow. Unfortunately, the uh, hand mm, is just molded solid there. So all he can do is a bicep curl. He can't really, you know... Uh, turn his arm the right way so that's unfortunate uh again the hips are on a ball joint so forward and backward as long as far as the you know the armor is going to let you in and out we do have a bit of a rotation right there for the ball joints as well uh we have double jointed knees we have a swivel at the ankle and we have a hinge at the foot so again pretty good set of articulation and just kind of going all the way around because he is going to be somewhat of a shell former so you can see how he looks all the way around. So there's all his shell, which again, you know, if going by the show model, these are supposed to be here. He did have those panels on the show. He does have a shark head for a butt. Uh, and, you know, he, he is going to have some kibble. The kibble city with this guy. Uh, there you go. Now, uh, we can give him his weapon. Uh, before we do that, we can take these fins and remove them. This is a feature that he retained from his previous life as Cyber Shark. And uh, what we can do with these guys is actually just put them in his fist and make some sort of like a, like a bladed weapon. There you go. So you can turn them, you know, either way or you can turn them in the opposite direction, something like that. So that's pretty cool. We've got ourselves a little bladed weapon right there. I suppose you could throw those as well. So we'll go ahead and remove those. And I lost track of which side is which, so... I won't remember or I won't know until I get him back into shark mode, I guess. Anyway, there's that. And then he's got his missile launcher, which, of course, I think I, I, I think I do have those backwards, but I'll fix them later. And, uh, of course, we have the missile launcher here, so we can give him his missile launcher. He can hold that in his hand. And we'll point that forward. My uh, copy here does have a little bit of loose hips, unfortunately. So, And then we'll arm him up with his rockets for his missiles. There we go. We got the two little buttons right there, and you can fire those one at a time. I have my finger in the way, but there you go. Pretty good uh, strength on the uh, missile launcher right there. So there we have one last look at Skybite. Amazing figure. I'm so glad I finally got him. I've been wanting one of these for a while. I know he is outdated by today's standards, but... I needed him to complete my R.I.D. collection. So there it is. That about does it for Transformers Robots in Disguise 
sky by what did you think of this figure let me know by leaving me a comment down below give me some thumbs up subscribe and share with your friends if you like what you see help me spread the word if you feel like it hit that donate button up at the top of the channel i really would appreciate it it would help out the channel tremendously thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you next time